Uh, hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on a vector diagram of a loaded alternator. Now, what does it, what happens to an alternator after adding load? As you know, the term the terminal voltage varies. Why does it vary? It varies because of the armature drop, the leakage reactance, and the armature reactance. Now, what does this reactance do? It causes drops, and those drops are Armature drop, leakage drop, and armature reactance drop. The armature drop is given by IA Ali, whereas leakage reactance drop is given by IA XL, and armature reactance drop is given by IA XL. Now, synchronous reactance. As you know, the synchronous reactance is the load react reactance plus the armature reactance. Now, what does the um, load reactance do then? It depends on the type of as you know, there are basically three types of load. Those are the resistive load, the inductive load, and the capacitive load. Now, first of all, this load, when you put in, with the total voltage drop will be the, and as you know, the armature drop plus the load drop. Uh, the load drop is given by um, J of XLS, that is, I mean, that is the uh, synchronous reactance. Now, upon simplifying the formula, you will get as I a set of x, where I set of s is the um, sum of armature resistance and synchronous reactance. Now, the terms that will be used in this, in this video are the E of length, that is the no load induced EMF, the E that is induced EMF after armature reaction, V that is the terminal voltage and by that is power factor and then next method will take the uh, vector diagrams. Now, number one, we are going to talk about resistive load. Re as we already know that uh, in the resistive load, the voltage and the current is in phase and that's why it has this written as unity. Now, let us assume this point as O and firstly, before going to the drawing of phase diagram, in the previous explanation, we have mentioned the drops that are I A R A, I A X L, I A X L. Then, firstly, we are, from this point O, we are going to draw a line which will be represented by V, and it is V is terminal voltage, and it, it will act as the baseline. And then, as we already know that in resistive load, current is in phase. That's why. Current is drawn as if it is along with the line and it is represented by I. I A. Then, after that, what we are going to do is we are going to plot the graph considering the drop I A R A. And the, the graph or the drop drawn will be from the point B till the drop that is I A R A. And after that, we already know that from Impedance triangle. Impedance triangle. The resistance, resistance, reactance, and uh, uh, armature reactance are all in perpendicular to each other. That's why we are going to second drop. That is I A X L will perpendicular to I A R A, and it will be drawn in this manner. Then after that, the third drop considering would be I A X A, which is armature reactance drop, and uh, in single to the reactance stop, leakage reactance stop, we are going to put in perpendicular to IARA in continuation from this point drop and that's what we will get. After that, we have going to join from point O to the total drop and it would be E node or EMF, E node as no load induced EMF. Then, after that, the joining of the two drops after from, from point O till the center of the joining point O, we will be drawing a tangent line and that will represent the drop at EMF after the armature reactance. Then, we are going to plot a graph from point V till um, point V till the drops from the terminal voltage we are going to plot a graph and this graph will be known as the 
the impedance or losses due to leakage reactance. And here we have also from the external voltage we are going to draw a tangent line and this would represent the impedance or total synchronous impedance loss. Next we are going to go on inductive load. In inductive load, as we already know that both current lags behind the voltage, that's why it is written as lagging. Now in similar manner we are going to take the baseline of baseline V and then we are going to lay the current by 5. And after that, in the previous explanation, we have already drawn, considered the three losses and have drawn it. And firstly to draw we draw the first loss, it should be in phase with the current that while it would be debated by angle 5 and it would be represented by this tangent. And then the next drop, that is leakage reacting drop, would be perpendicular to armature rail resistance drop. That's why it would be floated perpendicular from armature resistance law as shown here. And next drop would be like in similar manner, we will be drawing the tangent line from node till the end point that would be represented by E node. And after that, we are going to represent E by drawing the tangent from 0 till the joining points of two losses that, that are IA, XA and IA, XL and it will be represented by E. After that, in, sim in the, like the previous, like the previous uh, show, as we have done in resistance, we are going to draw uh, the tangent line from the terminal voltage till the drops, different drops that are going to be represented by firstly synchronous impedance loss and leakage impedance loss. And now to go on with third type of loading that is capacitive load. load. In capacitive the current leads the voltage that's why we have leading. And firstly we are going to consider the losses that are going to be plotted from point O. And in similar manner we are going to have B as X axis and we would be lead, we would, I current would be leading voltage by pi that's why it would be floated at the tangent I with the angle of pi. After that we are going to plot I A R A of first drop. It is in phase with current that's why it would be deviated by phi and after that this after that the next Draw would be I A X L which is floated perpendicular to it and then it will be continued by I A X A and from there we are going to plot the tangent by joining the point from initial point to the final point to give the no load induced PMF and after that we are going to join the starting point of line from point O to the joining of IA, XA and IA, XL and it would give us the induced EMF after armature reactance. Then, after finishing this, we are going to plot the tension graph similar to the previous video or previous example of resistance and inductive load. We are going to get IA, ZS and IA, ZL. From here, what we are seeing is that in capacitive load, the induced EMF is always less than terminal voltage because it is led by led because the current leads the voltage. That's why the E mode would be always less than V. Thank you. Like it.